Pinot Black, folks, and this was the constellations that you're seeing. Uh, actually, this would probably be tonight, okay? But it would still be pretty close to what happened last night, and I think I'm trying to think of what time I put it in. It doesn't really matter too much because the idea that the moon is going to end up in the same position somewhat in its... So the idea that when we go to... So pretty sure that this is the moon, folks, and I've seen it last night, and I was going to put a video up, but even in the video I was going, eh, that could be the moon. Yeah, it was. So I'm going to hit play on this also because Eddie will see... You know, I'm just looking at what the hell's going on around the, in the, around the world. So the idea that this was pretty much more than likely the moon. And yeah, this is for tomorrow. But basically, you do your timing, and I just rounded it off in my mind because I wanted to get the idea of the rise down at Antarctica because that's what I put in. So it computed up to the being the hour that I did on the video. So over the next three nights or so, or even longer, it doesn't matter. It matches up what I seen on video last night. So we'll hit start on this, and that's basically the moon there. And I'll have back up, and that there that'll be the moon. And interesting though is the idea to watch what is around in the sky beforehand, okay? And afterward, because of the idea that we know it's not what's in front of the sun and before and everything like that, and our which is not our sun because we will see what we got coming up here. So that's the moon going off more than likely. Uh, if someone wants to prove me totally wrong, then that'd be all right too, you know, as long as you get factual and truth. But that pretty much should have been the moon. And I was going to see about dark sidedness. Yeah, okay. So the idea when it's coming along, the dark side of the moon is over there on that side. Let's go back as we follow it, go through. Okay, the dark side of the moon is on that side. Does it, does it change as it's coming across? Yeah. And then even the supergiant suns, which are up 23, 24, but see, not our sun. We know that. But you see how it changes from dark side? Okay, you got the dark side, right? And as you see it starting to go away, I think we catch it, see? And then it goes to the dark side because this is nighttime, and it catches up with the sun, our sun, on the other side. Because it's chasing the sun, folks, you see? And then it's up on the light, lit side, okay? And then the supergiants here, or whatever's falling out of the supergiant, not falling out, literally, but I guess, you know, basically what's in the supergiants and the stars, and they're all stars, is uh, not got a enough light to light the backside of the moon, okay? So as we flop back, you will see that the idea of, yep, you see? But... It was giving the moon, and so this is when the supergiants and the sun are sharing, lighting the backside of the bright side of the moon. And then as the moon below Antarctic, folks, below Earth, and then is it starting to come around to, yes, folks, because when we end up seeing the moon right now, I believe in North America, I think we are basically getting the moon during the daytime hours, I think, if I'm right wrong, I don't care. But the idea that this just bleeds truth because we know where the moon is at. Okay, and then the dark side because these suns and the supergiants are not lighting the back side of the moon. As you see the dark side on it, see, it switches it's going below because the dark side is chasing darkness, nighttime. Okay, and yes, you look at your clock and that's UTC time, they're local in Antarctic, but it's nighttime, 2100 hours military time. That is military time before midnight. Okay, so then the moon goes along, chases after the sun, because the sun's, yep, going to be in the eastern sky, and the moon chases it, and then it changes, because the sun's hitting it in the eastern sky, and it'll chase it all day long, and here comes whatever is in our supergiants, yes, supergiant sun's there, folks, that big old bubble, okay, and then eventually the sun will catch up around 5 a.m. or so, and this isn't it, and there's worth its, what orbits it, whatever you want to pick it out of the stuff out of the supergiants, and yeah, you can see other suns, 3D, as I've showed you listed of, of them before, okay, and then this will come up, and then our sun will follow, the one we've known of, and there it comes up, the sun, okay, now, if you watch the track, as I go back, that's not the sun. Then the sun will come up. Now, I basically, that could be the sun. I'm not sure there. But as you've seen earlier, as I back up, 
That's not the sun, folks. Okay? That's not the sun. Okay? That's not the sun. That's not the sun. It's suns, but it's not the sun that we know of. How many times does it switch? Ladies and gentlemen, 365 days, point something. And they're all in the well in the super giants, okay? Now, you just got to watch it go through its little flights. And then, there's a song called Here Comes the Sun. And I'm not going to play it because then you got to play copyright infringement and all that crap like that. Yep. So, doesn't really matter if you see the sun come up or not. You know, there's more, way more than one. So let's hit start and see what other interesting stuff we have going on. And we could also take a, a view at the other camera. Matter of fact, that's what I'll do in a second. So just basically showing you that I'm not cake baking you. There you go. Real footage. And then we'll get up and get the clock too because we have seen people cake bake this crap. So there goes the moon. This is all going reverse. So, all right. So let's go to another one. So here's a good example of the 23 to 24 hours of sunlight that they have down there at the other direction camera. If I believe right, this should be the southeast, I believe. Okay, so that's not the sun. It's suns, suns of the supergiants. And then we will get one to separate out of all the big old bunches, I think. That's why we get such a big glow. And there you go. There she goes. The idea that you've seen another other camera. Okay, so then we'll get the sun to come up. Yep, you see that? Yep, you see that? That's why I say they're all bunched in the super giants, okay? Basically, let's go back so you realize that the idea that here comes all those suns, okay? And we'll go back to the first, but we even get a glimpse of them because we only get a short period of time of darkness down there. So, okay. So, there's night, okay? Then here comes one of the suns of more than 101 of them in the Super Giants main sequence. And that's the first thing that would freak everybody out. We started getting the sun all the way from behind Uranus and all stuff like that, which they have discovered. Like I've mentioned in the past, you go to Worldwide Telescope and you will see the transits of time. We've been lucky enough to get a little glimpse behind all those big meatball and everything like that in our darkness. And this is not towards the darkness. This is towards the sun, you see. Well, it was a little while ago. We were in the nighttime sky, right? So, but we're on the bottom of the Earth at Antarctica, okay? So this is not the sun. Well, the sun's back there and then eventually not yet that's not it and then we'll see the sun come up in a minute folks not exactly sure exactly which one but here comes something it's pretty much should be it the old sun we love her so anyway the truth folks it's what we studies for so we can figure out all the secrets of the world and you don't want to know them all okay so and basically there's all your clock know that you haven't been getting fake bacon let's hit play we'll just let it do its deal and I'm not sure if it's gonna go reverse I think it ends up being reverse when I do that whatever you'll see the truth whatever comes flopping around and as you see we get holographs again of dark light down onto Earth from objects in front of suns. And there's the evening hour again. Here comes the suns. And then here comes should the old sun. Yep. And then 23, 24 hours of daylight. And then we'll go back to nighttime. And you'll end up seeing the dark holograms that come around. And hit the Earth. And yes, there's people moving around out there too, but let's go back and see if we can take some time and go ahead and catch some of our holograms that end up down there and why they go searching for asteroids and so forth and so on. So I'm going to stop and you've seen one pop about there and see if we can stop getting seeing some of them. 
and we'll just go back to that one. We know we see a, see a human being down there, but we'll go ahead and go way off down the snow line between there and the station. And we will see one pop up in a second. There you go. We see a hologram, and we'll go ahead and take a look at it. There you go. 400% are holograms. 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 Okay, so let's take a look at it. Here's those holograms at 1,000. So let's go see some more. And then cross constellations, as you see, we'll see. And we have plenty of constellations that are shaped like crosses out there in space. Okay, and there's your holograms. Let me blow up to 1,000. And we roll up to the clock, and we'll roll down real fast so you realize that this is what you're seeing. Okay, it's all real. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's blow it to 1,000. And your eyes don't feel the station pretty much off at a distance. And then the hologram, hologram, hologram. And everybody's been watching the videos for a long time. We show them. So as you see, triangulation of planets out in those constellations and in space, check out, ends up being a square. And not a bingo square, folks. And yep, folks, all that from right from here. All realistic. All the times and everything like that. And you end up seeing that object we blew into, and we blew into that object, and that object. And there's a triangulation hologram on the snow surface. And as you can see, even though the sun is out, there's still weather, and it still bleeds through. Dark light from space, folks. Yep. Yep, the seismic charts have been busy today. and Actually, I refreshed a while ago and didn't take a look, but we see more ink. So we've got some interesting electrical magna. The motors of objects in space. Friction. 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 Friction is not fiction. It's electrical, and it is all the way through space, down to Earth, through our hemispheres and all of our spheres because we have many at uh, different heights and distance atmosphere on Earth. So, interesting in Russia and so forth. Let me blow this up, make the graph a little bit more viewable. And we'll go down to the bottom real fast. We're seeing that action. You're seeing a lot of different stuff. Just like looking at an oscilloscope, folks, almost. Electricians are going, wow, yep when you see the quakes on Earth. And there you go. A little action down there. Right in North America, ladies and gentlemen. And let's see what else we end up getting through today's action. And... Sometimes some graphs just get messed up and lock up for a while, and then they'll get recalibrated. But we got lots of action going on, and yes, folks, real solid ground over Norway. Hello to all the Nords. Okay, so Hawaii, we got into action today and everything like that, so you got to look at what normally had earthquakes today. I ended up seeing people in talk group, basically, uh, Cali was quaking again today. Yesterday we know about the 5.5, and then upgraded to basically a 5.6. Stop sniffing me! And all this action here. So, tons of data. And this is all today, folks. And as basically you'll see on temperatures and data that you can go out there and get. And if you read this, you'll understand. See, they take the weather balloons out and they go to a certain distance. They can only get up about 30 km. Uh, I suppose basically if you want to really find some good data, you'd go and say what the Virgin pilot dude, he's gotten balloons up way out real high for trying to break records. And other people too, so check rec record uh, heights of air balloons, hot air balloons, and so forth and so on. And then you'll get, and basically if you go searching for data, if you go back to the one I showed you on the airplanes and stuff like that, I was showing you data of uh, different heights through atmospheres and so on. And yes, the thin ozones are always at our north and south poles, at our magnetic poles. And more than likely, if we ended up getting any of that CME action, it would leak through to our magnetics north and south because those are our thinnest spots, okay? So that's why they keep it of the temperatures, because what's going through space at more than 66,000 miles an hour, 6,000 miles an hour of recent, faster than what we normally do. And yes, we spin like a rifle bullet through, just like down here on Earth, okay, through space, okay, which basically, remember, uh, the astronauts practice underwater because of the pressures of space. Okay, so that when you see those shots from outer space of the sun and so forth, the CMEs and everything like that, those are like waves moving through space, like stuff moving through water down here on Earth. Okay, comparable pressures. Okay.